Good evening and welcome. You're listening to the best in paranormal podcasts. This is the Paranormal 60 News, Ghost Ship, Mermaids, and Sea Monster Edition. Next, right here on the best in paranormal programming, I'm Dave Schrader and this is the Paranormal 60 News. Darklings, the season is upon us. That wasn't a demonic growl. My stomach just rolled. And fair warning. So for all of you listening to the audio only version of this podcast, don't send it in and tell me it's an EVP, although that's much cooler. We are here. It is time to report on the news. We've got some cool stuff to discuss. If you missed it this last week, we had a very interesting Monday show. The Paranormal 60, UFOs and the Dead. Walter Bosley, my special guest, as we discussed the connection between UFOs, alien abductions, and the dead speaking to ghosts. Is there a correlation? It was a fascinating show. People that tuned in and watched it live loved it. Those listening to the audio podcast loved it. If you have not had a chance to check it out yet, make sure you go back and revisit that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to it now. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry to announce that the paranormal detective has a night off. His wife, Lynn, was admitted yesterday for an emergency appendectomy, and uh, she is still not feeling great. He is with her, taking care of her, so he has the night off. But here, pulling double duty, ladies and gentlemen, the Colonel, Martin Vias. Happy Friday, Dave. How are you this evening? I'm doing well, buddy. Thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for, yeah, for thanks showing for up. Me. Yeah. Well... I- I took last it's, week off. I had I had to be here this, yeah. this week, you know. I know. I didn't want to point it out, but you know, yeah, I ladies know. and gentlemen, uh, it's time to go to the man with all the answers, the man with the plan, Chachi, Eric Folsom. Oh, look hey, at you, Dave. Ooh, wow. Yeah, deep reading at my Gosh. level. How the Grinch stole the Christmas, <laughs> and Nikki's not there to help you with the bigger words. <laughs> well, as you see, I was stuck on the second page. Uh, All right, I need you to pull your mic back from the mouth. You're coming in a little hot on me there, Goose. Coming in hot. There you go. All right, here we go. All right. Hey, guys, let's uh, let's start with uh, a quick pop of the cork, because I got to tell you, this has been a rough week for your old pal, Dave. Today, I don't know. People have told me I'm an empath. I'm feeling something. My emotions are all over the place. So I decided to... Um, drink my problems away with you guys tonight <laughs> oh uh, wow yeah is that is, the bottom uh, of the bottle that is deadhead i am completely out of deadhead rum amazing That's not stuff good. if you have wow. had it, great stuff um yeah it's really weird like i'm so goofy and emotional right now and then uh this is how bad it is you know do you, you guys get caught in those little uh tar pits of videos where you're flipping through them and there's monkeys taking a bath and kittens cuddling Mm -hmm. with baby ducks. Oh yeah. All right. So none of that got me, but what got me was this senior um, final senior football game and they hand the ball off and there's a kid who's ridden the bench the whole year with cerebral palsy and he starts running and and falls and they pick him back up and they all get back on the line. They hike the ball, give it to him again. He's only supposed to go like five to 10 yards goes down i think 30 was it 35 yards trudging and the the opposing teams they're cheering him on cheering him on and they're his team's there and they come around and he crosses the line and goes forward and his buddies are all there to grasp him and i just started bawling like a baby it was Mm. ridiculous i I think that was from last football season i remember seeing that yeah there is there is some good in the world Dave. believe it or not there is some good that's right there is and that that's a great lead-in for how i wanted to start tonight's show um you know, back in the day on my old show, I used to have this uh, darkness angels thing around Christmas where some families that were in need 
I would, they'd never solicit me for help. I just happened to watch and pay attention and I'd see families that were struggling and with their permission, I would get our, our audience to help out while well, our Christmas angel project is back in effect. And, um, we had such a resounding response for the first family, uh, a military vet on Thanksgiving, his wife suffered a massive, uh, heart attack. Um, he has been with her nonstop. So things have just kind of fallen apart. They were not doing well for the holidays. She's been ill. It was just, it was a mess. They, uh, I put out a call on social media so far. They've raised over a thousand dollars for this family. Plus people are sending troves of gifts to the children. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I brought tissue cause I'm pretty sure I'm going to get choked up here and weepy. Uh, so much so that as, as that's progressing, I happened to notice another post somewhere and uh, a, a, a woman that had exhausted her opportunities uh, to, to get help and just felt like there was nobody listening anymore. Nobody was out there to help a single mom, two kids, just having a rough, rough time of it and not going to be able to provide our children Christmas. So we put out the call again this afternoon, twice in one day, and people... Phew, Man, you guys, just amazing. And as I was going through the comments from the people, there was one comment that stuck out to me from the second post. And the woman just said, I'm, I'm in a really bad place right now myself. I can't donate, but I'm going to share this with others so that we can spread the word and help this family. And I thought, wow, that was, that was very compassionate. And it wasn't about her or her family. It was about, I'm going to do what I can do to help, right? Like the old widow's mite story from the Bible, where all the rich people are throwing gold and silver in, and, and she gives all she has is one widow's bronze widow's mite. And, and that was the wealth that made God happy, right? Because that was something that truly meant something to her. All that she had to give, she gave. So I reached out. And uh, I said, uh, if you guys will allow me to read this for a few seconds, I want to share what's, what I got. I'm going to save the name because, um, you know, to, to protect the family uh, and their interests. But uh, I said, I saw your, your post. Can you tell me what's going on? And she said, I'm in a, a bad situation, and I just wish I could help that family. Uh, I will share the post to try to get them help. Thank you for trying to help them, and God bless you. So even in reaching out to her, her first inclination is to feel bad she can't do more. So I said, well, what's going on with you and your family? Well, I've recently become disabled due to spinal injuries that have me in a wheelchair. I have three wonderful kiddos who make my day bright on the darkest of days. My husband works at a shoe distribution warehouse, and his hours went from 50 weekly to just 20 since the pandemic. Because of what we've struggled with to keep our power and water on has been almost impossible. And last Wednesday, as my child was washing his hands, the water was shut off. It's been eight days today. We're just a week away from having our power cut as well. We were able to get five gifts for one of our children, our youngest, who's autistic. Our Christmas may not be bright, but we'll still be thankful for it. <clears throat> right to the heart. So I said, uh, okay, what are your kids' names? What are their ages? How much do you need to cover the bills? Uh, she was a little reluctant to give me some information, but she did. Um, they need close to $1,000 to get their water, their heat and electricity back on, and to give them a little cushion and help out with a little food. Uh, so I told her I'm going to see what we can do. So I'm, I'm doing this one live call tonight because I didn't have a chance to post this. So for our amazing audience, just if you're interested in helping this family, and listen, Five buck donation is five bucks more than they have. She does have, um, let me see. I thought I saw this. She has a cash app. She does do Facebook pay as well. Um, you could do, I've got her email address. I've got information so that you can send electronic gift cards. You can send cash. You can do whatever makes you comfortable. Any size donation is going to help them. Or if you just want to go, I've got the kids ages what they like, and you can go on Amazon and just buy 
buy, buy and send some presents. doesn't mean you have to spend a lot. As a matter of fact, if you go on Amazon and you scroll over to the side, there's always a clearance area where they've got amazing stuff that normally would have been 30, 40, 50 bucks that you can get for nine, 10 bucks. So it's something to consider for families that are in need everywhere. And I know there's some of you watching this and listening right now that are struggling with the holidays as well. And what's absolutely torn me up is how many of these people have told me the situations they're in, but I want to donate $5. I want to donate $10. We want to buy a meal for the family. That's beautiful. So if you want to help out, just email me, Dave, at paranormal60.com. And uh, just keep them coming. Don't worry about it um, because I'm pretty sure we'll find another family if we end up with a lot of people that are willing to help this woman and we get what they need. We will then open it up to another family, uh, another person in need. So in the course of a day, day and a half, we will be able to help three families have a Christmas this year. And that may be the end of it. Maybe there's more to it. It's up to you and whatever your hearts and wallets can do at this time of year. And I know it's tough. A lot of people are in bad places right now. But I want to thank all of you that are doing something and have those opportunities. They are out of Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, you should be able to order through Amazon and just have them delivered. And if we do this quick enough, you could probably still get the stuff there in time for Christmas. Um, but I'm willing to bet that if those kids get presents a couple days after Christmas, they're going to be totally fine with that too. So email me, Dave at paranormal60.com. Let's keep the Christmas miracles moving. This is truly what the season is all about. And the love and compassion of our audience is unmatched. I've, I've raised, we raised almost a million dollars total in charity auctions during our darkness radio events. And, and I want you to know there was no cost involved in any of that. Everything I, I sold was donated at those auctions. So it was $1 million that went directly to every location, uh, Haven house, battered women's shelter, animal, uh, um, rehabilitation places, uh, animal shelters. You guys have an amazing capacity for love. And I want to thank everybody that's been doing that with me here for the last 17 years. And I took a few years off. I got a little cynical. I'm going to be honest with you. I just got a little cynical. And uh, now that we've reopened, I feel, you know, this has helped me with my state of mind today and kind of a, a blue mood and, you know, a funk just getting out there, reconnecting and helping people connect and watching people step forward to do remarkable things. So thank you. And uh, to me, that's news. That's good news to start off with. It sounds like it's sad news, but it's not because somebody heard, somebody pointed me in the right direction and three families are going to have a Christmas this year that they would not have had without you guys. So thank you all. Guys and gals, I feel like maybe that's the best way to say it. I don't want to offend anybody in this day and age. Let me uh, let me sideline us so we're all together. Oh, that's much nicer. Yeah. All right. Uh, guys, here's some fun stuff. Uh, I got sent this today <laughs> on social media. Sean Todd asks, question for Ghost Adventures fans. Has anyone else noticed that Aaron Goodwin is slowly turning into Dave Schrader? Hashtag <laughs> Ghost Adventures. <laughs> and there's a screen cap of, uh, of Aaron Goodwin, very bald, uh, with some gray goatee showing through, and he's got a mask on and uh, my glasses. So, yes, I did notice that. I don't know what it is about me that the people feel so drawn to emulate me. First, Bruce Willis started losing his hair to try to look like me. <sighs> yeah, it's just it's the ridiculous. look, man. Does it ever get old, yeah. Dave? Does it ever get old? It doesn't. You want to see, here's one of the best, I will honestly tell you, one of the best Dave Schrader impersonators I ever met. Are you guys ready for this? The photograph you are looking at is my son Linus at the age of 10 holding up a photograph of me at the age of 10. That's crazy. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah. So for no those DNA of you watching, test needed there, buddy. That's <laughs> none, right. None. Yeah. none. And I was needed. worried. I'm like, don't, son, don't grow up into this. And I've always been one that I want my kids to explore their own sides. What, you know, what inspires them? And maybe I should have been a little bit more clear with Linus because. Then he started <laughs> sort of like wow. looking an awful lot like Philip yeah. J. Fry. Uh, yeah, Philip J. Fry from more specific, uh, Futurama. Yeah. Well, that's what I thought. So, and then, <laughs> funny. This is honestly, this is not meant. He didn't do this on purpose. He just showed up to my house the other day and had an uncanny resemblance. To <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh man! Wow! So, Merry yeah. Christmas, Linus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Merry this year. So, so Linus looking very much like Shaggy. Uh, I, I could be wrong. I don't know. To me, that was pretty spot on in each one of those. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Lindsay says beautiful red hair. I agree. You know, I am a, a natural ginger as well. I, I know it's hard to tell by this burnt umber skin of mine and my ruddy hue of tan. What? What are you laughing at? Nope. Nope. I was yeah, looking at something yeah, in the corner. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, you must be. Commercial, funny commercial. Oh, yeah. But Dave, when so was the last go. time? I haven't known Dave that long. When was the last time you actually had hair? Like what year? We don't give away your age. Uh, we all know that. No, 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 no. I Well, you know what? I uh, So uh, Linus, Nathan. Uh, so it was probably around 1998. 99 and then i just shaved it off and i was ahead of the curve nobody else was doing the bald thing except for Aryan nation and charles manson <laughs> and when i did it my Good dad company, looked at me and he goes yeah right my dad looks at me and he goes what the hell did you do that for you look like charles manson all you need is that crazy little broken cross on your forehead i said it's called a swastika dad in case you don't know um but uh yeah then all of a sudden within a year every guy in minnesota was bald with a goatee you started i'm a trendsetter man. i'm a bit of a trendsetter yeah, so dave if you would uh, maybe the next show we have will be when will it be next friday night that's next what, show 23rd? next show is the 100th episode get out of here of the paranormal 60 not of the new segment you guys are behind a couple yeah we're episodes. We're, we're yeah kind of an after but thought, but <laughs> but i want you to know out of all the ones i could have done so it was supposed to be next Monday is episode 99 or 98. Next Friday would be episode 99. And then the following Monday would be episode 100. And I would be here alone with my guest. And I thought, no. So this is what I'm doing as a special holiday gift for the listeners. On Monday is episode 98. And we've got a brand new episode on Wednesday is episode 99, a special holiday episode. Oh. And we're going to be talking uh, with Chad Lewis about freaky holidays and and uh, the reason for the season, all the cool mythos behind all the things we do and the monsters of the Christmas season. There's more than just Krampus, my friends. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, so that's going to be on Wednesday. That'll be episode 99. But I made it so that next Friday is our Carry the one. Episode. And I get to spend it with my best buddies. So awesome. that'll be it. What are Marty yeah. and I going to be doing? Yeah. Uh, well, well, hopefully you guys will join me too. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll be in the comment section cheering you on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be great. <laughs> well, that's awesome, <laughs> I like, Dave. I like Emily's attitude. You are so good to us, Dave. I don't want to brag, but I kind of am. This is the night uh, of Dave wow. giving back. He yeah, is. Dave giving. Exactly. I like that. He Welcome knows Santa's on his giving. way. Oh, yeah. He's watching. Always watching. Uh, we've got news to share, gentlemen. I want to get to it because uh, I know we're going to start getting those comments on uh, on <laughs> the <Paranormal laughs> iTunes 90. again. Yeah, get going here. <laughs> They're going to get all bent out of shape. Uh, Greg isn't here, so we're just going to have to power through without him. Uh, maybe I should just slide this in as Greg stories. <laughs> like, I'll read like this for everyone. No? All right. Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's get to it. We've got some big, cool news to start off the show with uh, Eric Folsom. I get to go first. Yeah. You do, sir. Again, wow. you're giving. You're giving yeah, your spot a, to me. You're giving Dave Greg's spot to me. Wait a yeah. minute, but what about me? Uh, uh your well. number two, Marty. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. That's, okay. I guess that's. I don't <laughs> yeah, think he just got that, that that subliminal message you just sent him, Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're number you're, two, you're number two. Yeah. Yeah. You're number two. So, so let's tell the good news, Eric. What's going on in Long Beach, California? This is a PSA announcement public service announcement dave the mm -hmm, queen mm -hmm. mary and i bet a lot of our listeners have been on the queen mary dun 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 that mm -hmm. was good thank you it's going to reopen with visitors with free thank you tours for such said visitors mm. so when facing any challenge be it large or small we do sometimes wonder if we will sink or float and mm. if things are especially favorable we will sail into a brighter future. Boy, this goes right along with your uh, opening evening. I thought so. That last option is always the option we want, of course, and in pretty much every case we face. And in the case of the Queen Mary, the sail-forward promise of the world-famous ocean liner, a Long Beach landmark that's been in need of a hefty amount of TLC, is becoming clearer by the day. 
So clear, in fact, that the city of Long Beach announced on December 12th that select elements of the permanently moored vessel reopened December 15th. And the best news is the public is invited to join a series of limited time guided, in capital letters, free tours. The free tours will serve as a sincere and celebratory thank you extended to the community for their patience and support during the ship's closure, shared this statement from the city. Visitors will again be able to stroll a select stretch of the view-blessed promenade. Is it promenade or promenade? How did Isaac on the Love Boat say it? It was the promenade deck. And okay. then if we were if we were square dancing, we had to promenade to each other. Oh, all right. So this is but promenade. If you're square dancing on yeah. the love boat, right. though. What yeah. would yep. that be? It'd be promenading on the promenade. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That guy is quick. We're not gonna. He is all mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. The view blessed promenade deck, as well as the mm -hmm. opulent observation bar, as well as a few other picturesque spots on the destination, which has become known for its Art Deco details and stately spaces that seem untouched by time. Signage will also note what sort of repairs are going on around the vessel, bringing guests up to speed as to what has been happening since the ship's closure in, I didn't even realize it was this long ago, March of 2020. Wow, it's been almost three years now. Damn. Yep. That's great news. Yeah, it is. Very good news, isn't it? The Queen might be making her triumphant return, and oh, we yeah. can only hope that they're going to allow people to start staying there again and ghost mm -hmm. hunts, because those ghosts, they're missing people. They are missing people. Hey, Dave, um, a person hmm? by the name of a uh, of uh, Nikki Folsom uh, made a Not comment. Uh, yeah, hmm. I, I've never heard her before. But um, she said that maybe we should have a show from the Queen Mary. That's, oh, that's an idea. You guys heard it here first. Nikki Folsom is going to uh, produce and bring us all to the Queen Mary to do a show. Awesome. She'll be fronting the bill for that. I like that attitude. Yeah, That's I the kind of go That's get them attitude. attitude oh, Marty yeah. and I appreciate. Yeah, look at you're number one, Eric. The Folsom family is number one. Number Thank one. you for that. You're for number that one. That is wow. Awesome. It's time yeah. to change roles, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, maybe I'd we should turn off that. comments tonight, Dave. I don't know what you think about yeah, that. Well, that would be yeah. a good time. <laughs> Or maybe just kick just out individuals. Out everybody's everybody's <laughs> comments, except for Nikki. <laughs> out there. All right. Uh, Martika. Yes, sir. You Listen, have a story to share? I was shocked. Shocked, I tell you, by a creature on the beach. People say it's a baby Loch Ness monster. Yep. Damn. It was like sure a... It look like one. You're going to miss this if you don't hear it. It was like a <laughs> mock Ness monster. Oh, mock Ness. Mock Ness. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Very good, yeah. Marty. A baffled mm -hmm. British beachcomber experienced a vex on the beach after sharing pics of a bizarre beast they found washed ashore, with many viewers comparing it to the legendary Loch Ness monster. The perplexing, the perplexing. Oh, them. God. Oh, everybody. Oh, man. Oh, hold drink, on. Hold on. Let's just, everybody uh, grab your eggnog. Yeah, the perplexing is uh, perplexing. Perplexing. Mm -hmm. Jetson was reportedly discovered in November, but only recently surfaced on Reddit, where it currently is making waves as users try to make heads or tails of it. It uh, looks like a sea. Yeah, yeah, you got that yeah. one too. Yep, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It looked like a sea monster, Liz Lindsay Freeman told Penn News of the freaky mm. flirtsome which she found while walking on the beach in Pool Dorset. It caught my eye because it was so unusual looking and large, Freeman described the beast. I couldn't think of an animal that had a tail like a shark, but also had legs like a turtle. It also looked like it had little arms and a very strange head. I, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. There's a picture of it there for you. Yeah. Accompanying See, look photos. At look at that. Mm -hmm. Show the spotted creature, which seems to have four flippers, a mm -hmm. long neck, and a tail like a plesiosaur. Plesiosaur. Give us a second here. I got to go on mute while I take uh, a drink. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The extinct dinosaur that prompted the infamous Loch Ness monster myth. Mm -hmm. Extinct, you say. Extinct. The extinct. Yeah. I said extinct. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, sure you did. I did. I've never encountered something I like did. this, said mm -hmm. Lindsay Freeman, who made it. Say it. Say it. 
That's what he said. All right. Go on. Yeah. <sighs> Keep going, Mark. Flummoxed by the flartsum, she sent her family photo <laughs> of the mystery critter <laughs> with the hope that they would provide an explanation. The word you were looking for is flummoxed by the flotsam. Ah. Flummoxed by the flutsam. You sound like the Swedish the chef. chef from the yeah, Muppets. Flummoxed <laughs> 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 I, oh. you know, when this I glass I, was full when you started talking, you realize that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you notice the glass I have, so I was anticipating the story. Um, yes. Unfortunately, no one in her immediate circle could identify the critter, but Reddit's ever helpful commentariat was quick to take the Loch Ness premise and run with it, bro. Mm -hmm. It's clearly a baby Loch Ness monster. One armchair cryptologist joked, "The critter alleged." Plesiosaur like appearance prompted comparisons to the infamous Loch Ness monster. Hmm. So pretty interesting. Yeah. Could we, uh, I'm just, do you mind if I call in an expert to see if we can get the pro correct pronunciation? Sure. You, and oh, ah, <laughs> thank you. Swedish. Oh. Yeah. That's, All uh, right. So the, yeah. the comments of the night, you guys know, I love mm. the comments, right? Yes. Yep. Lindsay said, Dave, I thought you said Greg was off tonight. Oh, oh, come Man. on now. Apparently so is Marty. Bird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this might be my favorite comment. Don't make me snort temperament rum oh. chata over here. Uh, oh, that's gonna burn. Nothing Jess. worse than uh, uh, rum chata through the nose. Uh, how do you know? <laughs> it's happened numerous uh -huh. times. Yeah, I think there's a dark side of Marty we have yet to unleash. Oh, guaranteed. guaranteed. Yeah, I know what uh, he's dressing I... up for is uh, Halloween next year. That's right. <laughs> the Swedish. You you've made my. Decision. They've got that same. They've got that same jaundice pallor. I think you're right. <laughs> oh, Marty. Hey, hey, Marty. That's right. It's okay. You're number two. What? I know. Yeah. I'm number two. Always, I feel good with that. Always in my heart. You are my number two. All right. Uh, this is pretty exciting. So, so far, the Grey Ghost, the Queen Mary ghost ship back in operation. Story number two, the Mach Ness. <laughs> Nicely done. That's Mach Ness a... monster. Yeah. Uh-huh. Full of uh, flummoxed by the flotsam. Uh, that he's it's out there. That baby. I was about now, to take that sentence out because it, no, <laughs> it you can't take sound right. Out. No, no, no. It no. Didn't I like even it. Sound right. Read him as the guys, That's that's not even the best water sport story that we have today. Careful, careful. Oh, Real family show. Mermaids. Where? Real mermaids. Where? You're about to find out. Wow. We're gonna take this story to California. A I was group not a party. of real life mermaids was practicing life-saving rescue drills in open water near Catalina Island, California, when they heard a man cry for help. <laughs> we were already in rescue mode, said Ellie Jimenez, 33, who was teaching an advanced professional association of diving instructors mermaid class back on October 23rd. It was just such crazy timing. Jimenez, along with one of her students, Elena Garcia, wearing mermaid monofins, swam out to help as fast as they could, along with safety diver Great Chin Burger. Hmm. I don't make the names up. I just read them. Another mermaid. That. Yeah, another mermaid who was wearing bifins that day. The three women found three scuba divers. One, Pablo Avila, was unconscious, foaming at the mouth, not breathing. They worked together to help remove the 73-year-old diver's gear, give him rescue breaths while still in the water. They were saving him while he was floating. This is crazy. They worked together to help remove the 73-year-old diver's gear, gave him rescue breaths in the water, and helped him swim to shore. Jimenez describes the experience as really amazing and magical. It was a fairy tale afterward, Jimenez said, but in the moment, she said it was pretty crazy. Javier Clamont, 62, met Pablo Avila, or Avila. I don't know about that, Marty. You, you help me with get that. Come on, get it A -V -I -L -A. straight. A-V-I-L-A. Which, please. what is it, Marty? Avila or Avila. Avila. Okay. Because looking at your name, I thought it was Valleys for the longest time. And that does not look like Valles. That should have been like V-A-E-Z. Double L. Double L. Mm -hmm. 
Not, not in America, buddy. It's valley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh. I'm just just saying. Um, <laughs> oh god uh let's see anyway uh they were both experienced scuba divers we've been doing this for a long time he says on october 23 the two men along with claremont's son joshua went scuba diving off casino point a non-profit underwater dive park at canalita island claremont says he checked everyone's pressure gauges on their oxygen tanks and decided it was time to go to the surface he signaled to his son his son signaled back his friend was still exploring so I went up behind him and I pulled him, Claremont says. I asked him to go up and he agreed. And that's the last thing that he remembers. Claremont thinks Avila went too fast on the ascent and maybe held his breath, or perhaps there were issues with the scuba gear that they'd rented. Shortly after they surfaced, Claremont saw foam coming out of Avila's mouth. He said, I can't breathe, Claremont remembers. Then Avila lost consciousness. I immediately grabbed him, removing his mask, turned him around, cleared his mouth, Claremont remembers. He and his son started pulling Avila towards shore, screaming for help, asking people to call 911. Claremont estimates that there were about 80 yards from the stairs into the water when suddenly three mermaids arrived. <laughs> that had to be weird, right? All of a sudden, you just see these things are arching their way towards you. you got to be thinking, <laughs> I'm, you're seeing the tunnel of light, you're hearing every. What's going on? Please stay <laughs> with us, buddy. Right? And the three mermaids. As soon as the 26-year-old scuba instructor and mermaid photographer, Elenia Garcia, held the cries or heard the cries for help, I took off. I sprinted as fast as I could while wearing the mermaid tail. When she reached the three scuba divers, she saw foam coming from Avila's mouth. The situation? Very dire, Garcia goes on to say. It was pretty serious. He was totally unconscious, totally not breathing. After I gave him the first rescue breath, I started counting, she says. As a certified scuba instructor, she's been trained to do water rescues in full scuba gear. Since she was the only one wearing a mermaid tail and a mask, she just had to remove the, the diver's gear. I was able to be very quick, she says. I gave him a breath. I unclipped some of his gear. Her fellow mermaids, Ellie or L. Jimenez and Great Chin Burger, Dropped the dr diver's weights. I gave him another breath, Garcia remembers. I gave him another breath, and I just kept swimming. Just like Dory taught us in both of the movies. Just keep swimming. Just keep mm. swimming. Mm. She did a good job, Claremont says. It was a relief for me because when you're rescuing a person, if you do both the CPR and the swimming, then you don't do anything right. I got to guess, given CPR to somebody in the water has got to be tough because when you're pushing, aren't you shoving them underwater? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I'm yeah. doing good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't you die on me. Yeah. As you're drowning. Me, you son of a bitch. I didn't think he was going to make it, Garcia said. When you see someone that's no pulse, not breathing, I think it's pretty rare that you come back from that. The near death experience led Avila reconnecting with his estranged daughter and even meeting his grandchild, Claremont said. This truly is a miracle, Claremont said. My wife talked to his daughter and told her, look, your daddy almost died. Seriously. He was passed out with his heart stopped, so you guys got to leave the dumb things aside. So that worked out, and he had the best time possible with his daughter. So I always say God turns crucifixes into resurrections. And that is the article. It's a feel-good night here at the beginning of the show. This almost feels like Christmas Eve. Mm, does it? almost 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 but especially not. with Greg not being here <laughs> oh ah oh uh, that's uh he doesn't watch these shows does he i did no yeah, I, didn't I, think so, yeah. I think he probably does uh we've got alien news and more to, to report on but we're going to take a, a quick break because uh that's probably the best thing for us to do give everybody a chance to breathe stay tuned we've got more coming your way i'm dave schrader this is the paranormal 60 news crew Urban's Edge Tattoo Aftercare is the first ethically sourced, all-natural, vegan, and organic tattoo care line on the market. All of our products are formulated by leading experts in the skincare industry and are developed especially to nourish, enhance, and preserve your tattoos. Our tattoo enhancing balms are non-greasy and the perfect consistency for daily use. They're absorbent, hydrating, restorative, and are guaranteed to bring life back into your artwork. Visit www.urbansedgetattoo.com to order your starter kit today. That's www.urbansedgetattoo.com. 
The best in paranormal podcasting just keeps getting better. Take us on the road with you. You can listen to the Paranormal 60 and the Paranormal 60 News on just about every major podcast app out there. Don't hesitate. Listen. Be a part of the show. And if you're awake and alive on Mondays and Fridays, join us live on our YouTube channel at the Paranormal 60. And if you come to watch the episodes after they air, it can get confusing on the Paranormal 60 page. Click the live tab. That'll show you all the live episodes we've done. And then the video tab will show you some of the other special videos that we've posted, which reminds me, we have a special one coming up this weekend. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a great one. It's a good family story. It is the time of the season to celebrate all things spooky. Believe it or not, that's been a long-standing part of the, of the uh, Christmas tradition, our ghost stories. So I've got a good wholesome family ghost story, Huckleberry Hound and the Ghost Ship. You and your kids can tune in, get your grandkids, your nephews and nieces, maybe your buddy Eric who still needs a little help reading, and let Huckleberry Hound and friends help him through that. You can check that out, again, at the Paranormal 60 podcast page on YouTube. That's the Paranormal 60 YouTube channel. Hey, it's Chris Jericho here just reminding you about the Four Leaf Clover. Chris Jericho's Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea, the fourth voyage, leaving February 2nd from Miami to Great Stirrup Key, our very own private island. This is going to be the biggest and best Jericho cruise ever with the biggest lineup, the most fun, I guarantee it. Come join us for the vacation and the party of a lifetime. ChrisJerichoCruise.com. Cabin's still available. I want to see you there. Hey, it's a party this January 13th through the 15th in Southern California. The Fear Fair is back, and I'm a part of it. There's going to be paranormal stuff to talk about. Uh, we've got some great activities, music, movies, and a freak show. I don't think we're allowed to call it that anymore, but let's call it what it is. It's a freak show, good old timey freak show. And we want you to be there and have some fun with us. You can find more information at darknessevents.com. That's darknessevents.com. <laughs> Haunted Magazine is packed full of the paranormal, stuffed with the supernatural, sautéed with spookiness, garnished with ghosts, and even drizzled with a dash of demons. If you want histories, mysteries, ghost stories, hauntings, weird stuff, freaky stuff, and more supernatural than you can shake a stick at, come and see Haunted Magazine for the world's best paranormal writers. Visit www.hauntedmagazineprintshop.com for your latest scare. Remember kids, don't be normal, be paranormal. And if you love the paranormal, and I know you do, then come search the mysteries and supernatural Savannah with me and Shane Pittman, March 2nd through the 5th. It is going to be an amazing time. Check this out. There are ghost walks and tours. There are two, count them, two full night investigations. One of the famous Moon River Brewery and the famed Savannah Theater. We're going to be going out, having a great time. And this is one of my favorite things about it. Savannah is a very, very expensive place to be. The hotels, even in the off-season, are through the roof. We've got one package price. It includes your breakfasts. It includes your hotel stay while you're with us. It includes access to the uh, ghost talks that Shane and I are going to be doing and some other special guests. It also includes the um, uh, ghost tours and other historical facts and parts of the, uh, the trip. So make sure, well, all of the trip, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling on it as I'm trying to read through my shiny glasses here. Uh, but we'd love for you to be a part of this. You can find more information at darknessevents.com, searching the mysteries and supernatural of Savannah. It's going to be a blast. As a matter of fact, in a few weeks, we're going to be talking about haunted Savannah right here on the show with four or five great guests that are going to tell us all of the creepy history and stories. And we'd love for you to be a part of that. That's going to be in a couple of weeks here. So make sure you keep that tuned in and checked out as well. 
All right, let's get back to it. We've got, I, where's the Christmas hat? I saw your, your father Christmas hat for a brief second, and then it's gone. I thought to myself, maybe it's too soon. So we're going to wait till next week for that. Man, the 100th episode? Should we all come 100. in wearing Santa hat? Oh, I've got a lot of surprises, Dave. And let's tell Greg he should wear reindeer antlers while the rest of us wear Santa hats. <laughs> <laughs> all right chachi's here so is the colonel america's greatest hero martin Vaez. he is on hand with us we've got more stories to share i guess i'm doing double duty tonight since the paranormal detective is off and we're sending out good thoughts and prayers to greg lawson's wife lynn who is dealing with uh side effects from her appendicitis so whatever god or religion you prescribe to if you are an energy healer send energy to our friend lynn lawson and prayers up for her for a quick recovery and healing all right guys this is uh just when you think nicholas cage couldn't get any weirder oh here we go Mm -hmm. this is gonna be good Mm -hmm. he proves he can get weirder this story is about nick cage he believes he was born an alien. Oh, here we go. The 58-year-old actor revealed that his father had described him as an alien during his early childhood, and he was left shocked when he went to visit the doctor's office and revealed that, in fact, he just had a normal skeleton complete with, believe it or not, human organs, guys. Human organs. Ooh. He said, my father told me he felt like he had to introduce himself to me because I was such an alien. I was shocked the day I went to the doctor's office as a child, and I found out that I had normal organs and a normal skeleton because I was certain that I was from another planet. The Oscar-winning star went on to explain that he always struggled to connect with others and was eventually inspired by the late eccentric pop star David Bowie to take up a career in show business. He told Ramp Style Magazine, I had difficulties connecting with other people. When I saw David Bowie and The Man Who Fell to Earth, I realized I needed to do something, so I became an actor. I don't know if he's so far off, though. That's Nick Cage, and that's a photograph of an alien I found superimposed Mm, over Nick Cage. I don't Mm. see a difference. It's crazy. Both are big-headed lunatics. (laughs) (laughs) Am Am I wrong? I don't know. Maybe. The unbearable weight of massive talent star who is married to his fifth wife, Rico Shibata, and his daughter, August Francesca, three months with her, but uh, also has sons, Weston, and a son named Kal-El, who is 17 from previous relationships. He's made headlines on previous bizarre claims in the past, once alleging that he had been stalked by a mime whilst shooting Bringing Out the Dead back in 1999. He said, I guess it would fall into the stalker category, more or less. I was... I was being stalked by a mime, silent but deadly. Somehow this mime would appear on the set of Bringing Out the Dead and started doing strange things. I have no idea how he got past security. Finally, the producers were forced to take action, and I haven't seen the mime since, but it was definitely unsettling. So, did he have him killed? <laughs> this is, and I didn't see the mime again. <laughs> so... Nicolas Cage is always, you know, he loves Superman, the last son of Krypton, an alien sent to a planet. He named his son Kal-El, which is Superman's real name. (gasps) Spoiler alert. Mm. So it's interesting. Strange, strange guy. Strange guy. Guess what? We are this much closer. For those of you that are listening, my fingers are very, very close together when I said this. We're this much closer to a brand new Paratoons. It's kind of an old Paratoons, but it's one I dug up. Guys, it's our first rap paratune. Mm. And this rap paratune happens to involve some deceased paranormal TV celebrities and some still current paranormal TV celebrities. Mm, I'll get the juices in your brain bubbling on that. Think about it. Think about it. I but first, thinking. yeah. But uh, first, we're going to go to Chachi, 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 because he's got some news to report for us. Chachi. You have the con. I appreciate it, sir. So um, before we went into break, I showed an empty glass. I now have a full one. And the reason is I have read over this story 1,132 times, and I continue to make mistakes. Um, So for those of you that, Eric, (laughs) oh, Marty, I appreciate it. Sure. Somebody's Um, here to help you uh, should you need it. (laughs) Be on standby there, chef. (laughs) Wait a minute. I just realized this picture is the Swedish chef taking a toke. Wow. He is. He is. 
Wow. Or is he doing the chef thing, though? Ah, delicioso. Uh, he's in a state that's legal, so he's fine. Mm, yeah. Look at you right. calling the law. I like that, Marty. Wow. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. You ready for this? Okay. Yes. In Get September, your drinks ready, folks. Mm -hmm. I might as well go and put mine in my hand. Good point. Yep. In September 1961, a married couple was driving on a New Hampshire highway when a strange light began to follow their vehicle. When the pair arrived home, they were in a disheveled state and had somehow lost two hours in which neither of them could remember a thing. They must have been listening to the Paranormal 60 News. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh -huh. Those early episodes in the 60s weren't as good as they are now. No, not nearly. The couple was Betty and Barney Hill. And their experience is widely regarded as the first reported alien abduction case. Mm -hmm. This particular abduction experience took place while those involved were awake. But many other claims of alien abduction are said to happen while a person is asleep. For years, scientists and researchers have debated the validity of abduction claims and more recently have begun drawing parallels between the experiences of those who have reported alien encounters and individuals who suffer from the common occurrence of sleep paralysis. Ooh. Now you guys are thinking, Chachi, you're on top of things tonight. That's two paragraphs without a mistake. Mm -hmm. Very, Very nice, Chachi. Very Let nice. Let the games begin in paragraph three. <laughs> WebMD <laughs> describes sleep paralysis as a feeling uh -huh. of being conscious but un unable to move. It occurs when a person passes between stages of wakefulness and sleep. Is wakefulness like wokeness? That's the big mm, thing. No, there, right? different mm. things. Big oh. difference. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. No worries. Yeah. Not surprisingly, both sleep paralysis and alien abduction leave a person with feelings of terror, but terror oh. is far from the only thing the two experiences have in common. Mm. Sleep paralysis causes a person to become paralyzed during what is meant to be a state of REM sleep. The experience happens when a person is somewhere between being awake and asleep and can trigger hallucinations, negative emotions, and the feeling of a weight on your body. These instances, see, I told you, some of these words. <laughs> That's the easiest word in the, these is, this is. Here's to you, Josh. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, and Molina Crane was saying, yeah, oh, no, who said it here? Damn Melinda it, Jim. Said, I'm so I'm proud doctor, of you. not an English teacher. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she was proud of you. She jinxed you. All right. And, mm -hmm. I looked up and I saw it out of the corner of my eye. I got oh. a tear and I screwed up. Yeah. yeah. Too much Focus pressure. Focus on the story. Focus right. on the story. I can't look at you guys. Here we go. Yeah. Sleep paralysis is said to be connected to many tales of terror, like the old hag who sits on a person's chest. And in China, the. Should I even try it? Mm -hmm. Do it, man. Go for it. If any They're of you can listening. speak Chinese, the spelling is G U I. Mm -hmm. I would say Guai. Okay. All right. Guaya, or let's call it the American word, ghost pressure. Mm. Here we go. Here, here comes the hard ones. You're doing good, man. I'm with you. I'm with you, Eric, every step of the way here. Could you guys chant when I do it? Eric. Cha -cha. Eric. Yeah, no, okay. We'll no. see. No. Psychologist Kuzahiko Fukada of Fukushima University in Japan said, I think it explains witchcraft and alien abduction. He explains that the lack of comparisons available to those who experience sleep paralysis may lead them to believe something paranormal or otherworldly has happened to them, such as being abducted by aliens. Mm. <sighs> Dr. Mm. Al, <laughs> I, I look ahead. I look ahead and I just know. Uh, it's uh -huh. just coming. It's coming. So close to the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dr. Al Cheyenne? shot. Cheyenne. I'm going to throw it out there, everybody. C H E Y N E. Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Cheney. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. An associate Have professor of psychology at the University of Waterloo. Dave, you want to sing it? Waterloo. Waterloo, baby. What you never do. I don't know the word. <laughs> what you never do? do. The chef just yabba came in. Yabba do. Yabba do. Found yeah, in a so survey on. that sleep paralysis and alien abductions have plenty of similarities. A sensed presence, vague gibberish spoken in one's ear, shadowy creatures moving about the room, a strange immobility, a crushing pressure and painful sensation in various parts of the body. These kind of are like how you feel when you get one of I, these long stories. I mm -hmm. believe me. I was going to say it. I said, just keep going, Eric. You're doing good. Eric, we're going to get through this, man. We're going to get through this. These are compatible not just with an assault by a primitive demon, 
but also with probing by alien experimenters. And the sensations of floating and flying account mm -hmm. for the reports of levitation and transport to alien vessels. I am hyperventilating over here. I can't believe I made it through that. Almost there. Even with more research being openly conducted on both sleep paralysis and alien abduction, professionals still stand on both sides of the fence when it comes to the possibility of extraterrestrial entities. While it may be possible that some reported cases of alien abduction are a terrified and confused person's explanation for sleep paralysis, that mm -hmm. doesn't account for everyone's experience. Mm -hmm. However, and this actually surprised me, mm -hmm. only around 60% of alien abductions are related to sleep, according to the New York Times, while 40% still remain unexplainable. Mm. Mm. Unexplainable. So it's unexplainable. Does that leave you fluxum and flotsomed? I couldn't even begin to say that. Yeah. yeah. He looks like he's on ayahuasca, doesn't he? Yeah. Look at his eyes. Marty? Marty? Is that who you're referring to? It's up to the viewer to decide. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, guess what? It's time now for Paratunes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Let's dive into this brand new Paratunes specifically picked out for the Paranormal 60 News crew. I call that an, uh, an wow. what, what is that? What is that first? An aperitif? Shot? Yeah. Like a little, uh, the, the shot you take the, the, before aperitif. you eat the, an aperitif. Yeah. Aperitif. I like it. Mm. So there it is. So that Ladies wasn't it, huh? Hard to no. believe. From his debut rap album, The Other Side, this is What's Next with Nick Roth and special guests. Energy doesn't die, but the body that we inhabit will. What happens to that energy when the body gives up? Does it linger, travel to another dimension, or inhabit another body? These are the questions in our everyday life as time nears to what's next. This is Mark Constantino. When we make our transition and cross over, I believe the first realization we are going to come to is that there, there was no right religion that opened the gate to a better place. Rather, it's going to be the type of person you are why you lived your life here. This is Debbie Constantino. My thoughts on life after death and what's next. I consider myself to be a Buddhist as far as my lifestyle. I'm a firm believer in karma. I also am a firm believer in God and demons. I absolutely believe there's um, some place after this. I also believe that when we die, we get a lot of help move, a lot of, you know, get out. But I, I believe when we die, we're kind of one with God. We get a little taste of God, we get a taste of what heaven's like, we get a taste of forgiveness. Don't let these ideas manipulate you. Your mind should be an open book to your own thought process. This will be you thinking of life instead of death, as it's all about what's next in this life we don't fully understand yet. There's so many unexplained happenings circling our everyday atmosphere. Science tries to prove these happenings, but your body and mind feel these emotional gatherings from energies connected between dimensions. How can we say there is no such thing in this complicated world that makes you think of your own inner being? What's next? Heaven? Hell? Reincarnation? Another world? Reality? Death? A tomb? The ground? Actuality? Energy travel to a different galaxy away from this world we pass time in? Life? Death? What's next in this game of chess? This is your life. Make the right move as your eyes shut and it gets too tough to comprehend these thoughts in this world that spins. In this life with you, I do believe you feel the pain of what you've caused to other people. And I thought we kind of believe that. Everyone was born into this world to hoard the choice of your own future down this road. This is a fraction of a second in time for a soul slash energy to travel on. When the body is gone, I was put on this earth to help God and be an example. But my time is almost up and I will need to travel on to the next place my soul takes me. It's great, you see? This is what our destiny has a plan for me. When I'm gone, live on to spread the word that I've helped fight to bring me life to what was next, Jake? To what was next, Jake? What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? Next, 
Everybody has their own theory, but I feel my energy will live on and on until that next song. It's the fascination of trying to understand what life brings after death rings. Energy will never die, it will only multiply. Me and my soul will separate and enter a new journey from my fate to take. From what's left of my face to face, the new upbringing on this race to grace us with a new beginning. First comes birth, then comes death, then comes energy on this quest of what's next. What's next? Ask yourself that next time you look in the mirror. I'll see you on the other side. The other side. After we die, some kind of transformation takes place. Something goes on. Our spirit, our energy, that stuff can't be destroyed. It's still out there somewhere. Think of every person you've ever interacted with, the impact you've had on the lives around you, your loved ones, your friends, your family. You will live on in quite a literal way for at least a few generations. Some of the great ones, they go on forever. People like Shakespeare, people like Einstein, people who have influenced so many and still continue to influence so many even after they're gone. We can't all be Einstein and Shakespeare, but we can all affect the world around us right now while we're alive. It's kind of the lesson that goes give us. We have to have meaning. We want meaning. In our own lives, we want meaning to go on even after we're gone. We want to build something that's permanent. We can. And maybe, just maybe, as we're gone, we get to come back and see. This is Zach Bagans. I believe when we die, there is judgment day. If you believe in heaven, you must believe in hell. If you believe in angels, you must believe in demons. It is your actions in life that determines your eternal fate. But sometimes there's no decision and you're lost. Seeking answers, still wandering amongst the living. We must listen to them, for it is they who can also give us proof and answers we're looking for. Hey, we're going to realize that intolerance that we had on the plane of the color of the light skin. I'm Aaron Goodwin, and I think when you die, your spirit and your energy gets recycled into the earth or into another living being. Or what their religion is, is not going to play into anything on the other side because we're going to realize. It doesn't matter who you pray to or what you pray to. If you live your life. This is Jay Wosley. When the human body dies, the brain releases the chemical DMT, or dimethyltryptamine. This chemical is the strongest hallucinogen known to man. It is responsible for the development of our consciousness in the womb and our transcendence after we die. This is Dave Schrader. And I feel that when we die, the best of what we are is humanity, the love, the peace, the joy moves on to heaven and our greater rewards, and that which is left behind, the anger, jealousy, rage, pettiness, the basic animal instinct is what's left behind, and that is what people think are ghosts. Kula. and what happens when you die? Well, nothing really dies. Energy cannot die, it cannot extinguish, it can only change form, it transforms. Felt that that song needed to be bookended. Um, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I hope that's you're watching. A, uh, that is an, actually, that's an old song uh, from his oh. album, The Other Side. The song is called What's Next. I saw there were people debating about it. Um, that's back when he was still on the show. You heard Mark and Debbie Constantino, dear friends that are now gone. Uh, it was Zach Baggins, Jeff Belanger, Jay Wosley, and others. So it was really and kind Dave of Dave Schrader. Cool. Dave Schrader. <laughs> I do get to take up the uh, the. Uh, I gotta be careful how I said that. I was gonna say I get to take <laughs> yeah. it up the rear in the song, and that's Ew, not what I meant uh, at all. Not pay attention to the song. Okay, got it. No, no, not at all. All right. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that was a cool para share or you know, para yeah. song. What, what para tune? I can't. I, can't share it. Song, I, can't share it. I better just have a drink now. I'm not even reading in them. <laughs> yeah, and and worse is hard. We've been saying it for 98 episodes. Yep. All right, Martika. You have the con, my good man. That means yes, you get to read sir. the next story. And this one ought to be good because it takes place in Peru. Oh, Peru, yes. yes. I was thirsty. Yes. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, you may want right. to need a bigger glass, Eric. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to need a bigger glass. They're going to need right, a bigger glass. More than 160 mysterious Nazca 
geoglyphs are discovered in Peru. What? Thank geoglyphs. God I wasn't on video. Yes, oh God. my God. Geoglyphs? How did you say? How did you wow. like? Where did that voice come from? Over one hundred and sixty. Yes, he be, God. He 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 left. Paul Lynn for a minute. How's that <laughs> yeah. <for> my, uh, <laughs> reference? <laughs> we were watching the Paul Lynn Halloween special together on right. here just before yeah. we went live. That's crazy. Uh, All right, go for it. Okay. Researchers have discovered another uh -huh. 168 geoglyphs made right. in the soil of Peru's Nazca Desert, known as the Nazca Lines. The newly discovered drawings, identified by a team of Yamagata University in Japan, depict human camelids, birds, killer whales, felines, and snakes. One of the human drawings looks like Homer Simpson with a big cartoon eyes and a patch of what looks like stubble around the mouth. Yeah, uh -huh. there you go. Or it could be Dave Schrader with his headphones on. Yeah. Wait, uh, you look at, that, there. look at yeah. that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh, I see. Uh, kind of like mm. that Nick Cage thing. It's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> hard <Yeah>. to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Marty, uh, <laughs> uh, we just got the courtesy. <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. These 168 newly found geoglyphs are thought to date back between 100 BC and AD 300, mm -hmm. according to experts. But other Nazca lines may go back even further to 400 BC. Mm. The Nazca lines are a group of geoglyphs made in the soil of the Nazca Desert in southern Peru. They extend over an area of nearly 190 square miles or 500 square kilometers. Most of the Nazca lines were constructed more than 2,000 years ago by the people of Nazca culture. Around 200 BCE to 600 <laughs> yeah. BCE. Do we have to drink when he takes an awkward pause that's unnecessary? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Though some clearly predate the Nazca and are considered to be work of the earlier Paracas culture. Subjects of the Nazca made lines are generally plants and animals such as a monkey, a killer whale, a bird resembling a condor, a human bird, hummingbird, a hummingbird, a pelican, a spider, hey, and various... Did you say a human bird? Did you really say a human bird? No, I didn't. Okay, go on. It I'm just kind of sounded that way. Various <laughs> flowers, trees, and other plants, as well as geometric shapes, including triangles, trapezoids, okay. and spirals. Where's your human board? Uh -huh. Okay, human thanks. Board. Yeah. Thanks for throwing that up there. <laughs> Photos released by Yamagata University show some of the new discoveries, which lines manually aided by the images to emphasize the original lines, which have faded due to erosion. Yamagata University is working in collaboration with the IBM Thomas J. Watson Research Center in New York to scan aerial images of the Peruvian site with artificial intelligence. It's thought AI can identify markings in the landscape that the human eye would otherwise miss. By using the newly discovered geoglyphs for AI analysis, Yamagata University aims to clarify the distribution patterns of the geoglyphs, the university said in a statement. The results of this research will also be used for geoglyph conservation activities. The Nazca Lines of Peru has fascinated archaeologists for centuries. Other motifs already identified at the locations include a dog, a hummingbird, a condor, monkey, spider, and mythical beast sticking out its tongue. The actual purpose of the mystical, mystical mysterious, mysterious <laughs> Nazca lines in Peru have long puzzled the archaeologists. Mystical, uh -huh. mystical and, and mysterious. Mystical and mysterious <laughs> lines. Oh. Uh, theories suggest that they were created but to be seen by the gods in the sky, well, it's also possible that they are artistic expressions much like the ones we see today. Mm. How's, that, uh, how's that drink going down? Marty, it's time to sip a, a couple there. You, yeah. You're behind the curve. So. Yeah. I don't like that Marty has it in a glass that we can't see what's in it. It's something I like to call fireball in Dr. Pepper. It's a concoction mm. I made. Very that sweet is, oh. and very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I like to call my drink, which I have mixed from 
uh, deadhead rum mm-hmm. and a diet Coke, I call it a Coke head. Oh, very, very. And I like mm-hmm. to call mine. I poured scotch in a glass of ice. <laughs> very That's nice. Unique. So, very Rosa, unique. You know what? As, I'm a simple uh, man, Dave. As, as something that clears the uh, the palate, the Swedish chef approves. There you Beautiful. go. Yeah, he likes there it. You go. Hey, good news for people. If you are interested, come join us on the Four Leaf Clover, the Paranormal 60, and its news crew, the Colonel and Chachi, are joining me for a night of shots. It is called Shot in the Dark. We're going to be doing our news live aboard the Jericho Cruise. We want you to join us. You can get tickets and information by going to darknessevents.com. And then just scroll down, click on the banner, go get your tickets. Come on. It is a weekend of wrestling rock and roll music, paranormal and the paranormal 60 news crew comedian, Jeff Dyer is going to be there. Brad Williams is going to be there. It's going to be fantastic. And you guys are going to have a blast. This is, this is our third cruise together, right, Eric? I believe this is the third cruise. And I think there is a possibility Mm -hmm. with your help, Dave, that Mm -hmm. I may actually wrestle Jericho. Mm hmm. (laughs) <laughs> with your, that was does promised that mean last I time. Keep, yeah. I keep pouring the drinks, and then you're going to yeah. get up there? It won't be that again. Thing. He'll just be slamming me down on the yeah. I can take him. somewhere. But... I know I can take him. <laughs> I know I can take him. <laughs> All right. Uh, gosh, this is this one's so weird, but I, I feel I have to talk about it. Oh, I like this guy. It, first of all, those are real glasses. <laughs> it's It looks like somebody like painted them on, yeah. but this is real. Yeah. Swirling like a cauldron, Roger Stone spins a bizarre conspiracy theory. Uh, s- series. Oh, yeah, we finally got the Schrader. No, no, on no, one. Eric. It could be a series of conspiracy theories. The fact that he's drinking tells. Oh, me it's that funny. he can say. That yeah. he can say. A series of conspiracy, <laughs> of conspiracy. theories. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out here, Dave. Flummoxed oh. and flotsam. All right, yeah, you're right, Marty. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Roger Stone is now spinning a bizarre claim about the existence of a so-called demonic portal that has opened above the White House. Stone even appears to believe the portal is visible to those who are searching for it. During a recent appearance on the Eric Metaxas show, conservative radio host Eric Metaxas asks Stone about his thoughts on the existence of the supernatural. That's when Stone claimed to have seen the portal himself. I think that a, a portal, a, a, a bit of a demonic portal, has opened above the White House, Stone said. He added, this was brought to my attention by a Christian who lives in North Florida. You know, so they have a good, clean view of the White House, guys. Uh-huh. Yeah, fair. Right there. You just look right out the back other. window. Yeah, and there it is. Um, he said, this was brought to my attention by a Christian who lives in North Florida, who sent me a bunch of documents and also a bunch of notations from the Bible about portals. Stone admitted that he was initially skeptical before saying, so I was skeptical about it. But I looked at the photos. Also, there's a live cam where you can actually see in real time that there does appear to be something hovering above the White House. At first you say, oh, maybe it's a reflection. Maybe it's uh, an aerostat balloon. Maybe there's a logical explanation. Out of concern, Stone also claims to have called a friend in law enforcement who works for the police department in Arlington, Virginia. Now, according to Stone, his friend claims he also found something. He called me back about two and a half hours later and said, you're not going to believe this, but there's definitely something there. Other people were uh, there photographing it, Stone claims. Per Mediatite, the uh, stone said, if one zooms in on whatever is floating above the White House, it can be seen like a swirling cauldron above the White House. Now, I went and I I was like, this sounds too wacky. This has got to be like from Cracked or some one of these Onion news sources. I went and actually found the video of him talking about this. He actually talked about this. Dumbest news of the day. Or is it? What if there's oh. a portal swirling <laughs> yeah, above really? the White House? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I got to go check the footage. Check the footage. Before we leave, who doesn't love a good conspiracy theory? And you know what, Marty? You were right. I have a series of conspiracy theories that I'm about to break down for you. There you go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Beatboxing. We're yeah. trying. All right. You guys, fans of movies. We're all fans of movies. I've seen a couple. I like when a movie that you watched that has no contextual 
reach to another movie suddenly seems to breathe life into the fact that maybe movies by the same director might actually be connected. Like, did you know Blade Runner and Aliens are connected? Yeah, so it's true. There are little fragments in the movies that the directors have added that tie the universes together. This one may be the strangest I've ever heard, but if you're a fan of Leo DiCaprio, or as I like to call him, Leonardo, Mm -hmm. and a little movie a lot of you may have missed, it it came and went out of the theaters very quickly. Um, It was called Titanic. There's a theory. Now, guys, I'm going to talk about this seriously, and then I want your thoughts on it. There is a Titanic theory that Jack, as portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio, is actually a time traveler. Titanic is a monumental romantic drama set around the titular ship's historic sinking back in 1912. To build the drama around the film, it focuses on Rose and Jack's doomed love affair, leading up to the fateful accident with the iceberg. While James Cameron's film has a fairly straightforward narrative, that doesn't mean that there isn't room for some strange and thought-provoking theories. One theory brought up in a 22-word article revolves around the idea that Jack Dawson is actually a time traveler sent to the past to save Rose. And although the idea seems highly unlikely right out of the gate, There are many inconsistencies in the film surrounding Jack's dialogue and style that help add fuel to the fire. So let's examine some of these points. All right. Jack's. All right. The first reason why Jack could have traveled through time is that he has to gamble to get a ticket onto the ship, not having any currency from the era to get a ticket. Now, the problem I have with that is how do you gamble if you don't have money to gamble Mm -hmm. with? Yeah. Get something to start with. But maybe he traded a watch. We don't know. We didn't see the beginning, right? Jack also mentions fishing on Lake Wissota, which was an artificial lake created in 1917. So what's the problem with that? Well, the, that's five years after, after. the Titanic. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Mm. And then he goes on to tell Rose that he will take her on a roller coaster at the Santa Monica Pier, which didn't open until 1916, four years after Titanic sank. Wow. So already Jack displays signs that his memories are from an imminent future rather than the past. Jack's hairstyle, his cigarettes, and backpack were all also invented in the 30s and early 40s, making nearly every aspect of his character representative of a man out of time. The theory goes on to explain that Jack's reason for traveling into the past was to find Rose before she committed suicide so that she could live past the Titanic. This allows him to spend more time with Rose to try and keep her from ever wanting to contemplate a similar fate again. Now you may ask, okay, that's an interesting theory, but what possible other movie could this tie into? Why would Jack be sent to the past to protect Rose? Hands, gentlemen, anybody, anybody? Hmm. Hmm. A ship that was unsinkable? bumps gently against an iceberg and tears open the hole? Or was there maybe some help in that? Uh Uh-oh. Wow. Uh Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-oh. Another aspect that takes the theory to new heights is the idea that Rose's life has much larger implications that tie directly to one of Cameron's other films, The Terminator. The theory interestingly posits that Rose is the grandmother of Sarah Connor the mother to humanity's savior, John Connor. Therefore, not only does saving Rose ensure the fate of the timeline and no alterations to it, but it also means that Rose can live on to have a child that eventually sires Sarah Connor. While the theory does add to the grandiose ideas that often come from Cameron's films, it never confirmed in Titanic that Jack Dawson is from a different time, and it never likely will be. Still, the ideas add a unique sci-fi twist to the movie Titanic that injects excitement into the story, while not outwardly affecting the overall impact of this now classic film. Because really, in Titanic, we needed to inject something fascinating and interesting because it was such a slow, laborious movie with no action. Three-hour movie, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what do you guys think of that? I like that. I like the weird connected. Yeah, movie. yeah. Pretty so now I'm starting to wonder: Has he done this with any other films? Right. So he's done Avatar. 
Mm-hmm. Let's throw mm-hmm. that to the side for a moment. What mm-hmm. else? Is, what mm-hmm. else has mm-hmm. Kirk Cameron done? <laughs> well, that was growing well, pains. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. He, yeah. Pissed he was off a couple uh, of yeah. We stop a couple shows, of people. But... Yeah, but uh, no, uh, uh, James Cameron mm-hmm. has has directed quite a few things. It'd be interesting to run through those. I'll have to dig through it. This article only states those moments, but it is an interesting element to why was it so important to save Rose? And then maybe the reason that Jack sunk and didn't climb on the, the, the door was because he was also a Terminator who had been rejiggered. I said, yeah he jiggered and that's why he <laughs> saved her and he froze to the door first of all i do want you to know this great love affair between jack and rose don't let go rose now never let go and the minute she realizes she has a chance she like peels his finger and pushes She's him like, into the water I, that's what yeah. i love about that movie all yeah. the ladies think it's oh it's such a romance really yeah yeah, it's more like a the crime stone. drama in my mind. <laughs> it really yeah. is. It's slow. All we need is that yeah. Peter Wolf guy to uh, from uh, uh, Forensic Files to do an episode <laughs> on it. But did he really freeze in the water? Dave, yeah. do you uh-huh. remember us in Forensic Files? That brings oh, back I do. A good memory. It does, yes. M- multiple good memories. It sounds filthy when I say it that way. Yeah, I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> yeah. probably, probably better you don't, Marty. You'll, yeah. ju- you'll just get jealous. That's <laughs> it for this week, kids. Uh, an hour 16, not too shabby. Uh, that's it. Oh, nicely done. Where's yours, Marty? Now that Where's your yours? bottle's empty. Wow. Let me pass mine to you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Marty, that's if you fun. ever wonder why you're number two. Mm-hmm. I just realized, I just found you out. just realized. The, I just is realized it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I'm going to throw, I, I don't think I could do it from here. I'm just going to ask our audience right now. Okay. Just, I need one or two. One being our normal goodbye theme, or do we replace it? Do we replace the goodbye theme? Oh, yeah. With the new Paranormal 60 news song. That's number two. So if you would like us to now end the show with the original, classic, endearing Paranormal 60 News theme. Close to our heart. Say number one. If you want the new theme that was created, number two. Let me see it. One or two. Just pop up those numbers. Oh, we got it. Look at is this. Is this closer okay. or is that closer? Let's see. It. Let's see. Two, 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 two. two, two. two. Ooh. Jenny Ward. She's Jenny weighing in, too. Ward. Oh. Nikki she, she gets two votes. Yeah, two, two, two. All right, two, ladies and Replace gentlemen. It. Uh-oh. Thank you for tuning into the show. This will only be the end theme for the news for the Colonel Martin Vias, Chachi, my right hand man, Eric Folsom, and to our to our brother Greg Lawson and his uh, wife Lynn. A quick works. recovery. Yeah. Please, we pray for a quick recovery for Lynn. We'll see you again next week right here for the 100th episode next Friday with the boys. Make sure you don't miss it because we are the best in paranormal podcasting. This is the Paranormal 60 News. It's Friday night and I'm alone. Paranormal 60's on It's just for paranormal freaks like me The poltergeist and ghosts and blues and UAPs You miss a word, you do a shot It starts to snowball and we laugh a lot It's just like drinking with your TV friends I'll be messed out before tonight's show ends Dreaming the aliens are taking me away I won't wake up the song I'm late on Saturday It's Friday night and I'm alone The paranormal 60s on Schrader's on Schrader's on Schrader's on Shachi and the Colonel and the paranormal Detective always trained his copy and they all will be corrected He's got protective bracelets and some crazy magic tricks Even Scully cannot save him from the voice of Stevie Nicks Schrader's on Schrader's on
Friday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. No one day Dave might even put me on his show. There's a ghost in my mom's basement, man, I live down there, I know. It's Friday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Traders on. The Paranormal 60 is a Words is Hard production in associatum with Floxum and Flotsum and Fluxum and Flotusum and Flatulence. I got nothing. Absolutely nothing. I remember when, I remember, I remember when.